Hey guys, welcome to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick. Today we're working on this motorcycle fender again and we're going to be talking about bead rolling. So what we're going to do is create an offset feature just through here, just underneath this rod so that it mates up with the top panel. And we're going to take and create a flange all the way around this bottom leg. So we have to take and trim that bottom leg away until it's within a quarter inch of the rod. Now I've taken and marked everything out from the other side. This is easy to cut away because we can just follow the sharpie. But this one here, I'm going to show you how you're going to transfer this mark to this side without using a sharpie. This is the inside of the panel, of course, and we've got this line here, which represents this rod through here, as well as this mark here, which represents the bottom edge of the fender. And we have to take and trim this away until it's a consistent leg all the way along. And we'll take and roll that up into a flange, just for strength, because right now this kind of flexes. So a flange adds strength to your panel. And I want this offset to interface with the top of the fender because when we assemble it, we'll drill a series of holes and put a set of machine hex head machine screws all the way along the top edge. It's a piece of art at this point and you can just hang it on the wall. Once we've done all the perimeter bead rolling, I'm going to show you how to bead roll something in the center of a panel. And in the last video we saw it on English Wheeling, I mentioned that bead rolling eats material. Think about that for a moment while we work on this. Now normally I'd run a quarter inch tape line along the edge for consistent width but for today's purposes I'm just going to take and trim away by eye which you should never do if it's a serious panel you can use an electric shear because at the end of the day Cutting 20 gauge material like this does take a toll on the bicep, or forearm I should say, the bicep too. <sighs> okay, so there we have our kind of quarter inch line all the way along. It's about 5 sixteenths there, down to a quarter there. That's fine. And I'm going to show you how we're going to transpose this line to the other side. So the beauty of this tipping wheel is the fact that I can take and push down into the skateboard wheel. Yeah, it's a skateboard wheel. And very lightly run over top, just a little bit of pressure, run over top of that Sharpie line right there. You can push it or you can turn your hand crank. See, when I'm talking, I can't exactly focus. Now I'm pushing down a little bit harder than I normally would because I want you guys to be able to see the other side, the line on the other side. Okay, and there you go. You can see that line right there. So now that is our reference for us to push down with the offset wheel to give us a flange in that area. Okay, so what's going to happen is this wheel is going to push the metal down past the other wheel there. And because the profile, that line I created is a little too high, it's going to be kind of hard to push it, but it's working. Yeah. Because it's a point, it wants to run itself off. I should have put it through the English wheel and flattened it out. But I want you guys to be able to see it. Now it's quite a deep offset. Again, because I want you guys to be able to see it as I'm rolling it. This is not an actual part, so I'm not too worried about messing it up. Now, you can see what's going on here. We've rolled down, and this leg is now way too long. So now we've got to go through with a kick shrinker and shrink that. So I'm going to actually stick this part in to the kick shrinking video for you guys. And there we have our fender side skirt with that flange created. And that's going to sit 
just about like that. I can bring it in from the back side to show you how it's going to sit. There. So this feature here lines up with that rod all the way around. Now what we're going to do is create the bottom. Roll that over in, into the fender area. Technically, we're not bead rolling just yet. All we're doing is rolling edges, but you got to start somewhere. So we're going to start with the flanges. I'm going to roll this through. See, as I've been handling the panel, I've actually wiped off the Sharpie that I had indicated that edge width. But there's enough there to, to get us by. Okay, so that was the first pass, kind of broke the edge for us. But that's the hardest pass. After this, the wheel will run within that track and we can roll it up the rest of the way. At least most of the way. So we're getting there. A few more passes, we'll be up all the way. It all depends on the dies you have. Some dies we've got to set for the bead roller itself, and that'll give me a 90 degree, almost 90 degree flange. I have to tighten it up a little bit. But just on camera, I want to show you a few quick tricks without pulling out all the tools. If you guys want to see more, let me know. And we'll do something about the other bead roller. Okay, we're getting just about there. We can take over the rest of the way with a hammer and dolly. But that's not for this video because this is a bead rolling video. Too much junk on the bench. Okay. So there we're getting the beginnings of a nice flange all the way around. And we're actually getting a bit of a feature here, a little bit, because we're sinking into the skateboard wheel. When I take and roll that over, some of that will disappear. Some of it won't, but it looks pretty cool. Okay, so we just finished rolling that over. And as I said, it kind of softened that radius up. We can go in and uh, flatten that out a bit more, but I'm, I'm kind of liking the look of that little feature on the edge. So that's gonna sit. Not quite, I was hoping to sneak it in. That's gonna sit just like that. Look at that, it fits the edge quite nicely. Now, let's do something in through here in terms of a feature. What can we do? Let's do something simple. Say so something like that, come out to here. Bring that around, oops, bit of a burr there. You never do this on somebody's fender. This is just an artistic expression. There we go. Look at that. So we're going to create a bead downward into this panel. Up, downward or upward? What do you want? Unfortunately, this isn't live. So um, let's go downward. It'll look different. A lot of times people expect beads to come up. There we go. Now, the trick behind this is, do we put a radius on the end here? Something say like that, or a point? I think a point. Down here we can put a point. Sounds good to me. Before I go messing up this panel just to show you something, uh, I'm gonna do it on a scrap piece here. And we're gonna take and roll up something that resembles a bead here. So there we go. We want to create a bead in this panel. Now, what I'm going to do, go to the tipping wheel, and I'll show you what happens if we don't pre-stretch. 
All right, so we're gonna get this in the wheel. It's gonna go down like that, come around to the end, spin it around, come around again, and one more time. Good enough. Now this might be the effect you're after, but you see the panel has shrunk down. The panel has shrunk down. The panel has shrunk down. It's gotten smaller because this material had to go somewhere. It went down and see it went here. So, and that made the panel go smaller. Now, if I did it on the other panel there, it would actually turn into a kind of a mess and it wouldn't look good because you've removed the material that you created to create that low crown. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-stretch the beads or the location of the bead with the English wheel. Just pass it along a little bit, just to give it some more material so that when it does create, when we do create the bead, the panel comes out more or less flat. So I've got my high crown anvil in the English wheel, tipped up on its side, just to move the contact surface, point surface over. Let's get this in and just wheel up where we're gonna be creating the bead. I don't need to wheel the whole area. Uh, I'm trying to figure out my contact point. Okay, it's over a little bit more. There. See, you see the shiny mark? That's actually where the contact surface is, and that's good. And we'll come down again. I can't see where I'm coming backwards. Normally I turn around, but I don't want to turn my back to you. And this panel is going to get higher in terms of crown. But that's fine. Let's do this. Again, I'm going backwards. Oop. Boy, I really can't drive backwards. See, the Sharpie actually came off on the upper wheel. So I'm using that as a guide. Let's go one more time all the way around. Good enough. And I think that looks good right there. Good. Just tweak that a little bit. And there we have a higher bulge happening because we've created more material here. It's come up. When we create that feature in there with the tipping wheel, that'll drop back down, back to the original low crown that we wanted it on the, for the fender. Okay, so I just removed the fence because it was my, in my way. And we're gonna take and tip this to a sharp point going downward. Just a little bit of light pressure. I don't want a crazy bead because that would require more pre-stretch than I gave it. Can you hear crickets chirping? Three and a half. You always keep track of how many turns. Very good. You can do whatever your imagine, imagination calls for. Okay. Get our square out. And there you can see, we have a slight crown to that. So we can probably go down a little bit more in terms of uh, the bead and that'll drop down. But we have about a quarter inch on each side. And that's really what we had earlier, but uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Three and 
three and three quarter turns. Not doing too much. Okay. Okay, and that is done. We've just shrunk our crown down to about 3 16 and we're gonna leave it at that. And there's our finished side panel of the fender. I need to take and trim up this leg a little more so it's consistent, because a little bit of high spot there, take care of that. But you can see that fits in really, really nicely. Right there, and there, so. I hope this little video gave you a little bit more insight in terms of bead rolling. Beads make a world of difference. Instead of having a flat, clean, straight panel, give it some design and it looks a lot better. You can do an interior door panel for your car, hot rod, you know, whatever, we've done it before. And it looks really trick. So there you go. Now before this falls down, I figure I better set it down on the table here. So when I'm talking, we don't get any surprises. All right, guys, so the next video, we're gonna get into shrinking techniques for sheet metal. We're gonna talk about everything from kick shrinking to tuck shrinking, which is what we're gonna to use to bring this top edge down into contact with this rod here on the wire frame. We'll also talk about what happens to metal during minor collision damage. Is that enough? How about one more? Not too pretty anymore, is it? It will be. Once we take care of all that, it'll look like nothing ever happened, I hope. So thanks so much for watching guys and take care.